Why, hello, everybody! Oh, hi! hi. Hey, hello. welcome to Reckless Attack. We are a 5th edition Dungeons & Dragons actual play podcast. I am your Dungeon Master, Nathan, and right before recording, I ate too much Chinese food. Hey. And hey. I'm sure that will in no way come back to affect anything that's about to happen. Nope. Totally good. Everyone's just staring yeah. at me. Yeah, we'll not <laughs> yeah. be post-Chinese food sleepy at all. No, can't be. Uh, it's only sugar and adrenaline and enthusiasm for actual play content is what mm. is fueling me right now. Yeah. I am just imagining like a five minute gap in this episode where <laughs> we're just waiting for Nathan and yeah. just like twiddling our thumbs. Hey, Nathan, <laughs> could you adjust your posture? You've just started like slumping <laughs> forward and it's just messing with the microphones. Mm -hmm. And let's not forget. Welcome back, everybody. Hey. This is this is our first episode after the hiatus. No, it's, it's not. not. No. Ooh, <laughs> Steve, scratch that, Steve. Yeah. We already talked about what our first. We yeah. talked about it on a previous episode. <laughs> this is all staying in, by the way. Yes, yeah. it is. Yeah. Steve has post Gen Con. Yeah, 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 yeah. that's yeah. true. Yeah. That's true. Hey, speaking of, could you please introduce yourself, person who is lost to time yes. and space? I have no idea where I am or what time it is. <laughs> but do you know who you are? Uh, I am uh, Selv Esterdale, and I'm <laughs> and I'm playing Steve Hurlbut. No, no. Um, hey guys, I think we got to stop the recording. <laughs> yeah. I think you need to check on Steve. Do you yeah. have like an Apple Watch for your pulse or something? Or uh, <laughs> according to this, I'm. I don't know where I am. No. Um, <laughs> Hello, everyone. My name is Steve, and I am playing Selv Esterlin, the Dragonborn monk, and. Steve himself has just gotten back from Gen Con. Yeah. <laughs> uh, hey. So yeah, coming down off of uh, off of the the Gen Con high, where I don't have to go around and actually explain my t shirts to anybody. Hey. Pe people just get them, <laughs> mm -hmm. and now I'm back in the real world where I have to explain everything. <laughs> no, but sorry, that's. Also to me. Yeah, yeah that's right. say, that happens around this table too sometimes. Sorry, but, Steve. But not today. You know, everybody, I got that one. Everybody got this one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and we might throw a picture of it up somewhere. Uh, we'll see. <laughs> Steve looked expectantly at Nathan. Right. We're posting yeah. the yeah. We're yeah. posting this, right? Because I love right. this t shirt. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, everyone else must love it too. And now to my right. <laughs> Hi, everyone. I'm David, and I play Kaskrin Brightmane, the Dwarven Warlock who is really discovering his love for languages and the ability to become multilingual as he delves into the inner workings of Leaves Cant. <laughs> uh, I can't I say like, that. I that was about that. Where's this going? I don't... Uh, uh, I forget New things. languages oh, are, are okay. new horizons, Nathan. You can really broaden your perspective when you learn uh, more words. <laughs> Be gone. Yeah. <laughs> and to my right... Hi everyone, I'm Jonathan, and I play <laughs> Checkers, the Grung Druid, and his trusty frog pals, Mango and Junior. And if anyone's going to learn Leaves Cant at this table, it is going to be me. All right, <laughs> I'll fight you for it. Don't, right. don't well, you already? Don't you already speak uh, Druid yeah, and yeah, maybe Thieves Cant? Yes. Well, I didn't put it together in that way, so now I want to, and it's going to be Leaves Cant and... <laughs> for nature-based right, criminals, yeah, for right. eco terrorists. Yeah, yeah. This is All how the you raccoons leave. who are searching around in trash cans will know where the best trash cans are. Got it. And finally, to my right. <laughs> Hi, I'm Sophie. I play Valeska Carter, the human asterisk cleric of the Arcana domain, and she can just pass t like cast tongues, like yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just learn all the languages. But you won't be there all the time. Like when Alarith comes, like you might not be in the guild hall. So like, how else are we going to communicate? With words. No. <laughs> <laughs> Just in the same way I, we have been, yeah, I like, guess. We, I we have been talking to Alan multiple times. I, I almost picture it would be like Taval would be kind of an affront if she doesn't know the language and has to cast tongues. Like she knows so many languages that if she doesn't recognize that one, it's kind of like, uh, I, I, she would be angry about having to cast tongues. No, most of her languages she knows is more for research mm. and she can cast mind link to can to talk to anybody so she actually doesn't really need to cast tongues it would be to cast tongues for another person gotcha be it would universal, also just a probably, universal translator if she like wound up in like an area where 
they all speak a different language than her. It would just be like a to-do list. Yeah, uh, right. It's like, that's just a cool new opportunity yeah. as far as Val's Learn concerned. one more language. I think I still have a free slot. I think, you, I think <laughs> you still do. Just just, just in the back yeah, pocket. No. Um, I'm going to make it leaves cannon. <laughs> no. Boom, cannon. <laughs> Idiot. No. <laughs> have better in scores, yeah. fools. <laughs> so last time on Reckless Attack... I don't know why my brain paused there as if there's some sort of like call and response kind of thing. And I was going to be like, what? yes, tell us because I don't remember. Yeah. <laughs> I know. I was looking over my I, notes. I need this. Please tell we me. We came up with leaves can't. <laughs> we that's a, where my notes end, actually. We so a whole pun-based episode yeah. with yeah. Uh, Gary Carr, the chickens are. And oh, that yeah. was right, fantastic. Right. We started with saving chickens. I, I just need to once again call out and applaud David for poultry geist. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I I am still yes. incredibly impressed with that one, and I I just I just love it. Also, can we just briefly and look and look? Hey, everybody, it's Nathan talking. We all want to get to the episode right. We all want to play some Dungeons and Dragons. Listen to some Dungeons and Dragons, but also first, it's very important that we all recognize that Steve was like, I don't remember where I am or when I am. <laughs> but I remember one specific pun that David said weeks ago in yeah. real life yeah. at this point. Yep. And that was where the processing power was going. That's really where I've peaked with yeah. like, attack. So. But also we know Steve's okay. He remembered. Yeah. Pun. Yeah, that's true. That's true. The the core of Steve remains is, intact. Is intact. Yes. Exactly. So last time the most interesting and most probably important thing and pertinent thing to this episode and future episodes information that you guys got was from everybody's favorite P.I. Tree Guy, Alareth, who stopped by a little bit to just check on you guys, but also to broker some information, maybe kind of show his thanks in whatever way that he knows how by giving you information for free, as well as delivering some payment to you. You learned a couple of kind of interesting key things, mostly that Garnak the Minotaur might actually have a connection that you guys might want to pursue in terms of helping out the bones and reforging the protective circlet that goes around their arms that keeps them sane and sentient, basically. And so you learned through Garnak that... Yes, he did know someone. Yes, he would help you find her. No, he wasn't thrilled about it, but would do so. But mm, the location of this person is, well... Redacted. Redacted. That's a good way. There's a (laughs) big asterisk on it. But Garnak assured you, hey, we'll get it figured out. Let me talk to her. We'll get it all set up. Let me get back to you. And so you guys kind of content in waiting and learning more as that information came, focused on your next task, which, along with doing your to-do list, was visit the Agmar Library Board. Your greatest test to date, no doubt. Because Val had gotten word that her, we'll call it a research proposal, going into the restricted section of the library that has been sealed off for many years to go in and try to find, hopefully, the information you guys need to reforge the circlet of the bones and who knows what else. Now, this is a meeting that Val has been preparing for for some time. That you as a guild have been preparing for for some time. I'm imagining a montage of very important meetings of slide decks of maybe some sort of team building exercises to get into the right headspace. But today is the day of the fated meeting. I'm getting such like group project vibes yes. yeah. where like <laughs> uh-huh. Val is like doing all of this research and Kaskrin's like kind of doing some of the footwork and, and going around and finding different things in the city. And Selv is like helping Val do the presentation Reach the and books the on the top shelf. Yeah. <laughs> and then Checkers is the person who like doesn't yeah. do that anything. Was, <laughs> like, that was a project. We had to do one. <laughs> but he's also that person where like, you know, you kind of shoot him the slide deck 10 minutes before class or before the presentation. And then he's just like, yeah, I got it. And yeah. then goes up there and just fucking charms everybody. Yeah. I feel like Val is Leslie Nope. Checkers is definitely Tom Haverford. Oh, yes. 
Oh, boy. Huh. But then I get a little caught huh. up on, like, Cass and Self, because, like... I would like to be Jerry. No. <laughs> absolutely not. <laughs> it doesn't fit. <laughs> no, dang it. Sophie rejects that. No. Yeah. Tell, tell us, fans, who is, who is who in Parks yeah. and Recreation. Sophie. Yes. Could you kind of explain what you have done, what Val has done to get ready for today, both in terms of submissions, of research, Mm -hmm. of group prep, to kind of get yourself into the position to succeed? Well, I mentioned Leslie Nope, because that is the amount of prep work that Val has done to get to this point. (laughs) Each member of the library board has received a personalized binder uh, or like basically leather bound tome. Yeah, right. It's a, a full book really <laughs> yeah, at this point. That is, you know, has a very robust table of content, contents and index of like, here's where you'll find every question that she has answered. You know, there's a security section and she and Cass and Sal like really worked on that. And then she just sat down with checkers and was like, just like get into the zone. What would be the weirdest thing you can imagine coming out of a library of a of a magical book and just like using Checker's oh, chaos brain yeah. to like plan for everything mm-hmm. and like sent him off. Just like God. like put the idea in his brain and just be like, come back to me. You know, maybe tomorrow. Whatever, whatever you think of. Like boy, yeah. yeah. Think tank checkers. Book book golem is definitely on the list. Yeah, somewhere. I don't know how high it is, but definitely book golem. I'm gonna write that down in my notes. Okay. <laughs> yeah, he's our. Uh, you're like our our B and E expert that then that <laughs> yeah. then does it professionally to test security. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, oh yeah. 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 Like like those yeah reality shows where like former hardened criminals <laughs> yeah. are like, well, here's how I break into this house. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Exactly. And. You know, worked with Berga and Cass to like figure out who's on the library board, get to know them a, like a little bit better, like what's their vibe. Because I feel like Val is not, uh, she has done these types of presentations before, but in the context of like knowing her professor all semester, so like right. wants a little bit more rapport with the people she'll present to. And, like, as part of this exercise, you know, we have the names of the people yes. on the board, but, like, we don't really have a lot of information outside of that. And so, Kaskrin, as part of the group project, has really <laughs> been going out and, like, conducting interviews of people that, like, know these people or work with them mm-hmm. or, like, friends and family to compile perhaps the most detailed, <laughs> most comprehensive dossiers that the Golden Tree has. <laughs> I have an incredibly stupid idea, and I it may. Uh, I already, <laughs> love, I already I'm love listening. It. Yes. Okay. I just I'm just thinking as part of the preparation <laughs> for Kaskrin and Valeska as they've found out more about these people who are on the board. Mm-hmm. They have talked to checkers about like how important it is to make a, an impact about how yes, you know to absolutely. like prove your skills and like prove that you are able to go in. Of course, find that's so much of it. Need. Before we actually meet with the board, could checkers have gone into each of their homes and stolen all of their left shoes? <laughs> and then they come to the board only having one shoe, and then checkers is like, well, if I wasn't good at this, could I have stolen all your left shoes? <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, okay. Okay, here's what... Remind me of that okay, okay. when we're in the board meeting. Okay. If that is a course of action you would like to pursue. Okay. And what we'll do is we will do the like, you know, kind of blades in the dark heist movie okay. kind of we, like we flashed for this montage yeah. okay. Okay. kind okay. of thing. But yes. Okay. Okay. <laughs> we'll see how it shapes up. <laughs> so again, basically everyone has been preparing for this especially Val, but everyone is really a part of it and has been kind of tasked with either bringing something specific to the table in terms of expertise, in terms of their background and connecting with the library library board. That that phrase is a little harder to say quickly (laughs) than I realized it was going to be. Connecting with them or otherwise just kind of showing, hey, A, we have the Adventuring Guild chops to do this in ways that probably a lot of the people who are asking to do research or asking you to open this thing up 
probably don't have. And also we have the research and library expertise in Val and to a lesser extent, probably even Selv, that a lot of adventuring parties probably also do not have. So if anyone's to go in, why not the people who just rescued the city from the Mothman? The four of you are walking through the city square, walking from your guild house on the way to the library. It is the morning of, because all good meetings happen in the morning, obviously. That would have scheduled this for like first thing. Yeah. <laughs> and. But it's so early. <laughs> the library definitely told her, it's like, no, we're going to push this like two hours. Yes. Yeah, so actually, we don't come. We actually don't have our hours are not open then mm-hmm. for official board business. And yeah, I'm imagining you guys all sipping coffees or whatever, <laughs> you know, on the way, each carrying a variety of easels and, you know, like Catherine's pointers. definitely carrying that, like, uh, folding presentation board. You yes. Know, that, like, oh, the trifold the, board? Yeah, the exactly. trifold one. Yeah, we've got one of those. <laughs> and you guys, once again, are met with a fairly, fairly bustling day in the Red City of Ekmar. I'm just kind of, again, having this great vision of the four of you guys all walking, just kind of like, again, just carrying, yeah, trifold yeah. things <laughs> and of... 14 books and of whatever it is, you know, kind of like academic ephemera that you guys would need to accomplish this mission. And you guys enter into kind of the museum square, that place where you entered all those weeks ago now and is still bustling, even though it is no longer filled with all of the accoutrement of the Day of Returning Festival. You see old grand buildings designed for learning, designed for housing artifacts and and skeletons and fossils and all kinds of knowledge and power. You see a giant skull of a dragon. And you also see the grand library of Akmar. Who all has been in the library at this point? Other than certainly Val, mm-hmm. many times. I have to question if Checkers has ever been in a library. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's so, fair. But definitely not this one. Yep, fair enough. Catherine has definitely been in a library <laughs> before, but he probably saw it and was like, "Eh, this is fine," and has made no attempts to enter since. I don't think Selv has been in there. Uh, I know he went through the library yep. at the Guild Hall. Um, and then I think he just maybe left a couple notes for Val that said, hey, you know, if you're going to the library, if you could find out something about yep. the Halcyon Worm. And or... Sophie may not have said that, but Val definitely did. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Sophie, what would be the kind of over under on what? You've probably been here for three, four weeks. Is it three, four weeks now? Oh, yeah. I should be bad. I have to update the calendar, but several weeks now. How many times would you say Val has been to the library? Like individual instances or like days. I would say I'll say individual instances or whichever you think. But she is like leaves for lunch. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. You know, you want to change it up from the cafe food in the yeah. library every once in a while. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, like two of those weeks were downtime, right? Yeah. So she just spent like freaking all day, <laughs> <laughs> like at least. Probably like seventy hours of each week of downtime <laughs> in the library. And so, so. It is basically like if she's not checking something off the to-do list or actively adventuring. Yeah. She's, she's probably a, been in, the, in library. the library. Always makes it home for guild dinner, though, because that's a requirement. Got yeah. to. No one might know it's a requirement, but like Val will be very mad at somebody who doesn't show up for team dinner. <laughs> Even Checker shows up every night. <laughs> yeah. Dinner, right? It's important. And, and that... That at, should at say least, something. At least yeah, a lot, every actually. night after the first time that he didn't. Yeah, show up. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. <laughs> Sophie, if I may, if I may ask, what do you think is Val's favorite part of the library? Either features or like, what's a cool book? She says, like, oh my god, they have the most robust section on slimes and molds that I have ever seen, and I am into that. But what do you think? Is there anything that she's found particularly excellent? I think the thing that Val would appreciate most is the original text mm-hmm. in oh, yes. like the untranslated 
original language text that she has been able to read and review. Absolutely. And like get the like use her skills and all the languages she knows and gain a deeper understanding of things she read in a different language. But now that she sees like the original text, it's like, oh, it's, you know, more from this root word and can like kind of make her own interpretation of it. It could still be correct, but it's like, it's a fun exercise for her to see like what that got translated into and almost like back into it and like see if she would have translated it differently or something. (laughs) (laughs) She has four different versions of the Mm -hmm. book to be like, well, I see the, the, for some reason, the name the scholar James McAvoy is the name. <laughs> like, the James McAvoy version of this book really fucked up that sentence. Yeah. So, so not the uh, exploring spo- spores, molds, and fungi by E. Spengler. Uh, no, unfortunately, apparently, maybe maybe next visit I get okay. the reference. Good, thank you. I was just thinking there's a book somewhere called like how to like lichen. <laughs> and it's just like <laughs> which which actually gets misfiled all the time because nobody's quite sure if it's about werewolves or yeah like, <laughs> or, one of each maybe yeah yeah god it's called the same thing by a very similar author <laughs> listeners listeners if only you could have seen the way that Dave and David and Steve were looking at each other <laughs> as they just traded puns and just with Nothing but love and enthusiasm in their eyes. It was beautiful. The love of a lemon beverage. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> well, I imagine too. It's like uh, Checkers casting uh, animal speech, but it's just like how to do it for like single-celled organisms. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> These protozoa have so much to say. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> and so you guys enter into the ancient doors, the huge, impressive you know, front relief, and you all see Andromeda whose many arms are still sorting, stamping, refiling, what have you, of books, documents, and also very cheerily helping someone at the desk. As soon as the four of you guys come in, you see her uh, kind of pat someone's the person's hand up front and kind of point in a direction with another hand, and one of her many eyes kind of focuses on you guys, and this large spider creature very cheerily looks at you all and says, well, come come on up, everybody. Hi, hi, Val. How are you doing? I am so great and nervous and excited, and it will hopefully be a great day. I, I have every faith, and hello to the rest of you. You all must be the rest of the guild. Hello. Uh, my name is Andromeda. Hello. I am Selv, and I am... Uh... And Selv just kind of like <laughs> looks around. Three different clawed uh, hands extend yeah. to all of you. Yeah, Cashman doesn't really know where to look. He like <laughs> he like greets Andromeda, but then is like immediately distracted. Like, which eye am I looking at? Yes. <laughs> well, well, for for Sel for Selv, it's more like there are eight limbs. No, no. there's more than oh, eight more, limbs. more than eight limbs. <laughs> I'm sorry. So, um, while I'm sure Val has said what the librarian looks like. Actually seeing the yes. librarian is a yeah. little bit different. And so Selv's kind of got that, number one, is the attack coming? <laughs> and number two, which limb is yeah. it coming yeah. from? <laughs> Checkers would totally just be like, wow, can you see in different directions at the same time? Uh, most of the directions, yes, absolutely. I can see you here, and she's looking straight at you, and then kind of looks up to the top right, and I can see you over here, hi! <laughs> and you a couple of her claws waves, and she like kind of like then contorts her body in an alien, inhuman, lightly <laughs> horrific way, and says, and I can see you over there, hi! And then she reverts herself. Checkers would definitely like split up the stack, like Mango's over in one yeah. direction, Junior's over in the other direction, and uh, he's like, well, how many fingers am I holding up? <laughs> I was just, I was literally about to say, you got a four on the big one. Uh, you got a, a one. I th- well, it's kind of, he's not really, he's just kind of holding up his, his whole hand over yeah. there with the smallest <laughs> one. And then, well, it's hard to say you have one of your hands behind your back and I can't see all your toes. So ah. uh, I see you're holding up that front hand with two. Wow. And Catherine just like lightly shudders. Like, <laughs> the I'm sure he'll get used to it, but the first time's a little, a little off putting. It's a lot. Uh, yeah. And and self makes note then based on based on what has just happened of her blind spot. <laughs> <laughs> Not many is no. the answer. Yeah. 
And she says, well, of course, I know that today is a very big day for you. So I just want to say good luck. I'm, we're really, you know, actually a lot of us here at the library are really pulling for y'all just because, well, frankly, we've all been very, really interested. I mean, certainly very scared, but very interested in what's going on over in the restricted section over there. And you know what? If anyone's going to go in that isn't just a small militia, then it should, I, I, you know, we're really pulling for the four of y'all. Thank you so much. Sophie's laughing, but like Val understands <laughs> their seriousness and it's like they've talked about it multiple oh, yeah, I'd times. Imagine. They have like had probably like lunch break conversations <laughs> of just like, well, what do you think is in there? <laughs> and not like monster wise, but just like what texts. What cool things. <laughs> yeah, what, bo- what cool books are in the restricted section? Caspian starts opening up the little uh, trifold thing, uh, and he's like really proud of it. <laughs> and so we, mostly Val, have done our homework, and we are ready for this presentation. And it, it does look very like fourteen year old science finish, <laughs> with like some of the pictures are like lightly rotated yeah. to like mm-hmm. come at fun like, angles. It has these pieces of paper. To yeah, the I was gonna say like, it yeah. has the paper kind of glued offset, so yeah. kind of the color pops a little bit. Yeah, you know, some visual interest. <laughs> I brought this potato battery with me i don't know if it's going to be useful but i have it i know val's been working really hard and i know y'all y'all have been working really hard too and it's a good thing it sounds like you've done all the stuff you need to do but uh you but you know the library board is a very serious place they're very serious people who who really care about books best of luck all y'all need to do is just and one of her hands that was kind of pointing forward just like extends straight backwards in a way that like almost rotates around her body in a weird way and points directly behind her. It's like just to follow that aisle right down there all the way to the back of the library. And uh, you'll see it. There's lots of signs. There's all kinds of things. And Val, you would have seen seen this. Conference room four. Yes. Uh, Yeah, exactly. Mm. Exactly. Uh, Val. Good luck. Val says, so thank you so much. Thank you. And to know, Andrew, I'm going to probably proofread her proposal multiple oh, yeah. times. Uh, yes, absolutely. And would have been happy to do so. Yeah. Uh, so Val leads the way to... Conference room four. Yeah. <laughs> well, I was trying to describe her walk more so, but uh, yeah, she's just like with a purpose walking back there and trying to like take some deep breaths Like Like, like school teacher uh, on a on a... No, 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 she trusts you all to like follow her. And down we're and walking, I. and we're walking. <laughs> so I have a question, actually. Yeah. Uh, how did we dress in a particular way for this Ooh, presentation? Great question. I was kind of thinking about this. Val is in. Uh, you are in your formal gi. Val's decided. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> it was laid out for you yeah. <laughs> at a time. How but did yes. you know where this was? <laughs> <laughs> Val is wearing kind of like a longer tunic shirt and more of her illustrious atheum yeah. uh like it's not a formal gi set but she kind of had like the nicer set that is mm-hmm. the colors of the illustrious atheum has insignia from there yeah and like the chalice um she, she has that on she would have asked cast to dress a little bit more mm-hmm. formal and really just made sure checkers had a bath yeah <laughs> <That> was- <laughs> not actively smelly yeah, yeah. That was it. Okay. <laughs> she would have been like, oh, look, my, you look you look real tight. You should relax in the hot spring tonight. You got a big day tomorrow. Here, have a root beer and just chill out. Yeah, have a little oh. extra soak. Wow, you're being so nice to me, Val. Yeah. As, as, there as might Val's... have been like frothy water yeah, of soap in there. <laughs> oh, no. Oops. I just dropped this, this, uh, this solvent on you. My bad. Here, let me rub that off of you as just this huge bubble froth comes up. Mm-hmm. So what is what what is cast what is cast wearing? What's what does oh. formal cast look like? Yeah, I, now I'm deeply oh, invested. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't know if this is going to be like two fourth wall breaking, but I am a hundred percent imagining him. He's got like the short sleeve button ups. He's got the suspenders done, and then he's just got like plain whatever like the khaki absolutely pant equivalent yep. in this world is, and he is just like ready to go. Ugh. So uh, beautiful. It's perfect. Any any armor. At all that cat that cast wears like as formal, uh, like 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 uh, armbands or just maybe just like the leather jerkin or something, or um, uh, cast like doesn't that. wear sleeves, right? Yeah, not not <laughs> uh, in this case. So like he's got like the short sleeves, but it, you know it just continues to like show off 
uh, his rocky arms. I just imagine your rocky arms can't fit in sleeves. Yeah. So bother. <laughs> That's probably true. I'm trying to see it. Like, how would he get shirts on then? If you, he can't it's pull... just like. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you just have like imagine a long piece of cloth like laid out flat. You have a hole in it for your head in the center, <laughs> and you like put it over yourself and then button the sides together. Uh, like a, or like, uh, like a poncho. Them. Yeah, like, yeah, like yeah. a poncho. Okay, yeah. But you oh tie God. the sides together. I choose to imagine that, like, rather than having the button up shirt button vertically, it buttons horizontally. So you wear the top of it. And then you have to like strap the bottom of it around your torso. <laughs> oh, yeah. and this then is just button the the button. I, together. Yeah. I, I also my I, brain does not comprehend. I, yeah, that. that's I also I also imagine a significant amount of trial and error on yeah. Cass's part <laughs> until he gets a shirt design that will actually work for him. So it's like I just imagine like yeah, because <laughs> he's trying to like put on stuff and just like dang so, it. Cashgrin is wearing his business casual poncho today. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> This is the deep lore that people yeah. turn into, <laughs> yeah. tune into. Hi, friends. Thanks for listening to us today and letting the sweet sounds of Reckless Attack grace your ears. If you're having a fun time hanging out with us every week, come join the conversation on Twitter, too, at Reckless underscore Attack. If you're loving your time with us and want to help us grow the podcast, why not support us on Patreon? It helps us keep the lights on here at Reckless Attack Studios, and we love being able to give our patrons a behind-the-scenes look of what we're doing outside of our regular release schedule. Looking for other ways to spread the word? Make sure to give us a rating or leave us a review on Apple Podcasts or your podcatcher of choice. Thanks again for spending your time with us. And we hope to see you again soon. So you all go into the library. And for those of you, again, as a reminder, who have not been here, and maybe even still for Val, it is an overwhelming sight. There is huge stacks of books. You can see just books floating and be restacked seemingly by themselves that you, Val, would know to be invisible servants. You see scholars. You see it's not super busy, but you see uh, quite a few people who are kind of kicking around. You see books flying around. You see strange parchment. You see things hanging up on the wall that appear ancient and very potentially meaningful. And you see like display cases of all kinds of strange, interesting clothes and equipment and other kind of antique looking things. But you walk past all of them on the way to conference room four. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and above you, you see a, an incredible sign, immaculately carved conference room four. <laughs> How do you guys make your entrance? Val will stop outside the door and check the time. Yep. Okay. How well? How early do you think you were? Really, you, you got there? Oh, she is at least thirty minutes early. <laughs> <laughs> I, I guess that means the I rest of us. The rest of us are at least thirty minutes early. I was gonna say, well, did you tell everyone else? No. That yeah, we all not. thought that we were on time, and so we're just waiting outside the door, and we're like, "Are we going in?" And Val is just like, "Oh, it doesn't start for another half hour." <laughs> no, Val will like listen at the door and ask for everybody else to listen, see if anyone's in there yet. Everyone, make me a perception check. Ha! And you thought we weren't gonna roll any dice, you fools. Val has a 19. Castron has a 12. <laughs> Selv has a 22. Nice. <laughs> Checkers has a 16. Both Selv and Val both rolled high enough to hear some activity inside. Okay. And Selv, because of your high number, and Val, because of your deep experience in libraries, both know that it sounds like people are setting up the room. Okay. So... The four of you, um, and is Mango with you? Absolutely. I, I assumed so. Yeah. But I wanted to be 100% yes. sure. The, the full stack is present. <laughs> Billiam will be summoned when needed. Yes. yes. And you guys set up your various props, trifold boards, books, and all sort of other things that you require for your presentation. 
after approximately 30 minutes, a young woman comes out of a side door. And she appears to be human-ish in nature. She kind of like glides in and it takes you a second because she has this big flowy gown behind her. And she kind of waves at you guys just because you guys are there and she's being polite. And as she waves, you can see through her hands. And as you're kind of, we'll say politely looking, you realize that the sleeves of her long dress are kind of flapping a little bit. And it's not that she doesn't have hands, but it is as if her hands are made of wind. Like you can make out almost small appendages of fingers and of a palm of just kind of this swirling vortex coming from out of her hands. She again waves at you guys politely and sits down and kind of goes off to a little side table and Kaskrin you would definitely notice that she makes eye contact with you and kind of like perks up a little bit and then kind of like goes back to getting her ink and parchment and stuff together would Val know who this is being around the library so often and thinking that this is not somebody on the board, but who works for them and she may have interacted with in this process. I'm just going to say yes, okay. in that you've put in 70 hours <laughs> <laughs> for the last two Per weeks. week, so yeah. at least 140. Exactly. This is Violet Hairbreeze. You know her because she works at the library. She is a librarian. You would have been introduced pretty much as soon as Andromeda. You kind of got tighter with Andromeda. Yeah. And you were interested in meeting anyone or just kind of introducing yourself to librarians around, Mm -hmm. you know, kind of what few there are. She works here, has worked here for quite some time. But everyone actually knows this person sort of by reputation. In that, this was the person who was attacked by the Mothman on the way home from work one night. But she appears to be in good spirits. The librarian we never went to see. Ah, okay, okay, okay. And seems to be no worse for the wear, assuming her hands were like that before. Were like that before, <laughs> but that doesn't really track with the Mothman. So, Violet, uh, again, who you would who you would definitely know the name. Yeah, of. Yeah, that would have like Val. waved back. Yeah, exactly. Hey. She takes again takes her seat kind of off to the side, which again Val would know is kind of like the stenographer's mm-hmm. desk. And after a few beats, and after she kind of settles you see four other people file in. One, you see a tall half-elf man with dark skin who has some very nice robes on and has a red cord around his arm. You guys would know this as not just library board member, but city council member, Rin Gran Talpa. Behind him, a middle-aged human woman who has a blue cord around her arm, wearing fairly sensible, fairly normal robes, but still formal. You know this to be Sonia Raban, the head archivist. She has an assistant with thick glasses following her in and kind of stands right behind her. You guys would know that it is because she is actually deaf and has usually someone around to help translate, help do what have you. Then a halfling woman comes through the door who is carrying a large stack of documents barely contained in her arms who has a green cord around her arm. This is Enid Grassleaf, who is the head researcher. And finally, you see the top of a bald head just barely peeking out over this table. As you hear kind of the flap of feet going along the last remaining chair as a gnome hops up into the final chair, just kind of barely peeking. You see in bright, ultra-colorful, almost Joseph Technicolor (laughs) robes, Francis Tallyballywine, who's wearing an orange cord and is the head catalogomancer of the library. The catalogomancer, would they also be responsible for procurement. Uh, yes. Okay. De- depending on what it was, 
but generally yes. The four settle down in their seats. They all kind of nod at you guys uh, as you are all kind of standing there and they kind of look at each other and you hear them kind of talking. They're like, are we are we ready? Are everything good? And she says, yeah, uh, go ahead and go ahead and, uh, and call him. And Sonia, uh, the head archivist with the blue cord, leans over into the middle of this large table and kind of flips open a panel and seems to depress something, like a button or something. It takes a second or two, but you guys hear a strange, very faint whistling sound. Just... (laughs) Roll for initiative. And and from out of the middle of the table, popping through as if through a pneumatic tube, shroom, is the head in the jar, Serval Rentado, (laughs) the final member of the library board. (laughs) <laughs> oh, who's staring at you blankly, seemingly unaware of his changed situation, but here nonetheless. And then Enid Grassleaf, the head researcher, stands up. Thank you all for joining us here today. We have received a robust research proposal from the Golden Tree Guild, as well as several letters of recommendation from the illustrious Atheum and civic leaders here in Agmar, as well as several auxiliary documents that were unasked for, but immensely helpful, and several documents that we actually had to go into our robust storage and filing system to properly find and accommodate the submission of. We are, frankly, all in uniform agreement that the reputation of the illustrious Atheum lives up to its grandeur even in this age after the destruction of so much knowledge and community. And we would just like to thank Valeska Carter for her submission. It was a real treat to go through. We have also given you pre-approval ahead of time for your next three research initiatives because of our appreciation for your hard work. But, though much of what we are here to to discuss has already been addressed again in this robust application, this request was so unique, so interesting, and potentially very dangerous that we had to ensure that this was done in a public way and done in a way befitting the long bureaucratic traditions here at the Library of Agmar. We enjoy a degree of autonomy here. The city council, while having a presence, knows our duty does not actually lie to the city, only to the safety of the knowledge contained here and what access to it could mean to the world around us. In short, we are the final approvers of this work. We are the ones that must be convinced convinced that the risk is worth it, convinced that it will be safe, convinced that you all are willing to seek death to find the knowledge that you seek. She kind of like looks knowingly at Val and like, (laughs) get it? (laughs) So, is it? And are you? Yes, and we are. Thank you. <laughs> say, Val, thank, you, thank you for your time. <laughs> After Enid finishes her remarks, Val will step forward, simply stating, it is always worth it, and I am always willing. And I thank you for giving me the opportunity to defend my research and planning to delve into the unknown and to seek it as well. And then stand silent to answer any and all questions. And I would also like to say, like, I imagine that there are some opening remarks and there are some like yeah. introductory introductions given like, hi, this is I am Vlasa Carter, I'm self Astralin. And Kaskrin has actually worked with Valeska over the past couple of days to practice this introduction in sign language. And so he has, you know, even if it doesn't match up perfectly mm-hmm. with what we're actually saying, he, <laughs> yeah. is, he is trying to do that greeting to Sonia Raban. But 
he's not very good, and so the signs are like big, exaggerated movements because like his rocky fingers can't really <laughs> and get that sort of dexterity. Mm-hmm. So and he, en- of... he ends ends with "Thank you in advance for your broccoli." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So I imagine, you know, kind of the first questions that come towards us are obviously, you know, what are you doing? How are you doing it? Absolutely. Um, and Kaskarin, as the introductions are happening, kind of walks around to some of the other tables and takes the candles from them, too, and sets them on the table in front of us until we probably have around a dozen. Mm-hmm. He gestures to Selv and says, if you would, while opening up the trifold uh, <laughs> thing that they have brought... Inside the presentation, there are a number of uh, very detailed diagrams filled with specific numbers or symbols, kind of like uh, a lot of like just circles and like a lot of like concentric circles with like lines poking out of them, sort of representing 3D space. He finally rolls out a big piece of parchment, a map. And on the parchment are similar circles and symbols to what's on the trifold. Selv will gesture towards the candles, and you can see little figures start to kind of move and walk. And then the uh, the flames kind of rise up a little bit and go to whichever uh, sections of the map that you have out that you would like them in. And they kind of look like they're walking through. And as some of the figures sort of move around the parchment, some of them also begin to float up and kind of spin and walk around each other. Mr. Talpa, you seem like a man who wants to know the details of things, being on the city council. We know that going into the restricted section, there could be any number of situations that we would have to prepare for, including non-gravity or traveling to the astral plane. And the the little figures on the in the flame just go from like walking to like almost horizontal, and then they're just kind of like flailing a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> we have adapted a technique of navigation throughout the oceans of Rixia in order to help us create waypoints and find each other, even should the directions of up and down be reversed or lost to us. And so he goes through each one of the diagrams mm-hmm. in the circle and. In the dossier that he's prepared, he knows that Councilman Talpa is, like, a big naval guy. Like, mm-hmm. he loves the navigation. He loves navigating through the stars, the oceans, the waves, uh, and the patterns therein. And so he is sort of calling back to that in an attempt to win his favor. Awesome. Love it. And... uh the councilman and all of them are obviously paying attention to all of this, but he nods and is like, very impressive, very impressive. Sonia Raban stands up and her assistant comes forward and she begins signing sort of to you guys, but you know, certainly within kind of eye shot of her assistant and her assistant begins speaking to you all and says, well, we have fairly detailed records of what all may or may not be in the restricted section. We do not know everything. And both of these realities mean there's a lot of opportunities to get long-lost items, potentially, to get prize artifacts, to get key pieces of our history. But it also, of course, means that there is many opportunities for adventurers to come out with loot, with things that they decided they want, and certainly of worse. First of all, what exactly, beyond any knowledge about the bones, are you interested in for good and for ill? And what kind of guarantees are you willing to give to give us that you will tell us of everything you find? Uh, Selv will kind of step forward and he will address his answer basically directly to Sonia since she was Mm -hmm. technically the one who who asked it, uh, regardless of of the the translation. He will give uh, give a slight bow and say, An excellent question. I suppose what this comes down to is how trustworthy we are and our willingness um, to work with you. I know you don't have much to go on, 
but I would submit our defense of the city against the Mothman as an example of our trustworthiness and our willingness to protect everyone in the city from what may or may not be in the library. In addition, we did give a magical artifact to the bones in order to um, protect them from the loss of their armband. So we are willing to put others ahead of our own greed for magic items. You can just see, like, Checker's beginning to be like, well, I didn't really want it. <laughs> I, I just see Cass, like, yeah. putting an arm yeah. around Checker's. Yeah. Like, it like looks like he's, like, yeah. being cordial, and his hand just wraps yeah. around yeah. his the mouth. Hook. Yeah, Checker's is, like, very obviously, well, actually. <laughs> no. I'm going to get that net yeah. back. Yeah. <laughs> and Val kind of steps forward and adds to, to, to add to that. And In addition, this is a chance for the library board to get a status on the restricted section to see did it in fact become part of astral space or could you yourselves potentially send librarians into there and what safety measures we could help the library put into place to make sure all who pass your muster have access to the untold knowledge in that section. And just to prove it all to you, I have a demonstration. What? Uh, Val, <laughs> That's, Val yeah. self, and Cash all so like just make whip, eye contact. Whip around, yeah, whip yeah. around it to, to check. Everyone else does as well. This was uh, this was not in the script checkers. As he's going up to kind of where the presentation area is, he is carrying in his arms like this large pot of dirt. I imagine this is what was in Mango's barrel. Yeah, this yeah. whole time. It's just, yeah, it's <laughs> no just one knew. Dirt. Yeah. <laughs> And he sets it down on the table, and he looks over at Francis Tallybally Wine, who he knows, like, up until this point was maybe looking, like, a little bit bored, kind of sitting oh, back for in sure. his seat. But at the words of, like, I have a demonstration, and just kind of trying to see where this big pot of dirt is going to go, Francis kind of sits up and just starts paying attention. Underneath all of your seats, you'll find a presentation that I have prepared for you. <laughs> and... Each of the board members reaches underneath their seats and finds this, like, tightly rolled sheets of paper. And in each of them, when they open them up, it's just, like, five or six crayon drawings that Checkers has done. And is it several, like, several yeah, pages yeah, of crayon drawings? several pages of you crayon drawings. You get a drawing. car, and you get a car, <laughs> and you get a car. And it, it's the same for all of them. We, the Golden Tree, have in our possession this bag. <laughs> oh, Val, no. Val is like so confused trying to place it and like what is happening and everyone's mind looking linking down. like Cass mind linking back and forth between Cass and Sal being like do you know what's happening what's happening you see, what's happening you see Sonia's you, you, assistant lean forward and tips up the head jar and underneath it somehow are five or six yeah. <laughs> and like props it up in front of the head who again you're not sure can see any of this but whatever <laughs> Val hears in her head as soon as she mind links to, to self, self's like, how did he get that out of the vault? <laughs> how did he get out of the vault? Like, Val is not comprehending what Checkers is about to do right now. And Cashman's like, trying to keep us cool, because, like, we're still presenting, you know, yeah, right, yeah. and, like, freak out. <laughs> right, like, yeah. what is he doing? <laughs> and he, and Checkers pulls out a single bean from the bag. <laughs> <laughs> self hears in his mind, oh, no! <laughs> Behold! This very dry, very untasty bean. But its appearance belies its power. And you can see already there are two two strong reactions. Most people are just kind of like, what's happening? <laughs> and well, and I guess your own party is now yeah. <laughs> reacting very strongly, realizing it. But you see Francis, mm -hmm. Tally Bally Wine, start to lean forward. And you see Sonia who is the head archivist and is a steward of artifacts and magical items, start to lean backwards <laughs> as this is all happening, as her eyes start to go very wide, mm -hmm. and she's, like, reading your lips as you are talking. I know that you of the board are very interested in what we, the Golden Tree, can do and how we can handle unpredictable circumstances. And they're just leafing <laughs> through all of these, and several of them, their mm -hmm. eyes are just getting... What is that? Right. No, oh no! Is that? 
blood. <laughs> <laughs> and as as they're actually leafing through that, the, some of the specific things that they see. Why is this grand drawing just a fire? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> One of them is like uh, all of us in the conference room together and like this big angry tree is just like slapping people (laughs) (laughs) Mm -hmm. um one of them is like a big explosion from underneath the ground as a large like creature with this big hard shell is like slashing and like tearing people apart one of them is a big pyramid that just appears in the center of the boardroom and the whole room is just like surrounded by these like spooky zombies that are moving around. (laughs) One of them is just checkers holding the bean in like one corner and then like just every single person in the room just exploding into a whole bunch of little pieces. (laughs) Like very graphically, just like limbs flying off. In in crayon drawing. Yeah, in In crayon crayon drawing. Yeah, in different directions. Now, I will prove how resilient we can be by burying this bean into the dirt. Val is trying not to panic, but will definitely... Mind link to Cass and being like, push that bucket of dirt away. <laughs> and Cass was like, hold on, hold on. He's like reading the reaction. No, 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 no. <laughs> and like, some of them are clearly. Wait, we're uh, almost there. We yeah, almost got yeah. them. Yeah. Val doesn't get the response from Cass, so she mind links self. <laughs> Val, you don't understand. We've got most of them. We just need one. And, and she realizes it's all like, happening in slow motion. Yes, <laughs> Checkers is like moving towards the dirt. And Checkers puts the bean inside the jar of dirt and stands back. Behold! Bean hold! Bean hold! <laughs> so, Damn it. I'm rolling the D100 now. And we'll see what we rolled next episode. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> it's good, though. <laughs> it's good. <laughs> see you next week, everybody! Oh, oh man. What was what was hilarious was um my friend Henry was there and he uh he has two kids he just uh-huh. had his second yeah. uh like I don't know six months eight months ago something wow. like that all right and so he hasn't like been out around people sure. very often yeah <laughs> right. Right. and so I I told him this was his first Gen Con and I told him all right look if you want somewhat of the of the experience go to the dance because yeah. it's mm-hmm. it's uh-huh. like it's a whole thing it, yeah it's a whole thing and um. So he uh, he joined us uh, joined us there, and then I told him, "Hey, you know the DJ will take requests. You can go you can go up uh, go up the stairs right there, and you can go talk to him." And he's like, "Oh, cool!" So he runs up there. He comes back down, and he's just like smiling. Okay, and I was like, "Okay, oh, this will be interesting." So he had them play "Master of Puppets" by Metallica. So they go and they they start playing "Master of Puppets," which, if you're not familiar with it, this is like. It is the quintessential let's start a mosh pit oh. song. <laughs> and so they started and then you it was it was really weird because it was it was funny for me to watch, but um I was like, I started moving back because I knew it was gonna happen. Uh-huh. And so people started like, you know, bump like yeah. diving into each other and doing all this stuff. And you could see there was a very clear delineation in age of people who knew what was going on <laughs> and people who had no fucking idea what was going on. Because <laughs> they're like all these, all these like maybe 20 somethings just like scattered and were like, oh my god, what's happening? And yeah. all these like 40 to 60 year olds are just like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. That's okay. It was, it That's was amazing. But then, then they had somebody kind of ran in and was like, no, 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 no. <laughs> like, you know, you, can't. You, you guys cannot do this. They will cancel the dances from here on out if anybody gets hurt. So, you know, uh-huh. so they're just like, everybody's like, all right, you know, okay. And they, they kind of like, you know, just became the basically yeah. the head banging and like, yeah, you know. Yeah. But oh my God, it was like, it was like that, that clear line <laughs> of age. Yeah.